Well, the Starship IFT-4 flight could potentially take place as soon as April or May. It's truly an exciting prospect, albeit challenging, but as we all know, nothing is impossible for SpaceX. This exciting news was recently announced by none other than Elon Musk himself, along with senior officials of SpaceX. So join us in today's episode of Alpha Tech as we delve deeper into this groundbreaking development and explore the possibilities that lie ahead. Just days after after Starship IFT-3 made headlines, SpaceX appears to have provided some insights into when the next test might occur. This schedule seems highly reliable, and a notable detail worth mentioning is Elon Musk's optimistic response to a post predicting the next launch in April, where Musk simply said, hopefully. While this statement may not explicitly confirm the launch date, it does offer an intriguing glimpse into SpaceX's resilience following the recent flight and the readiness of the hardware for the next mission. If Musk's hopeful statement materializes and the next flight indeed takes place in April, particularly before April April 20th, SpaceX will set a record with four flights of the new heavy lift rocket within a year. However, achieving this feat will undoubtedly pose challenges and require swift action from SpaceX engineers, especially considering the limited information available regarding the success of the previous flights. Contrary to skepticism about Elon Musk's reliability, it's worth noting that another highly influential figure at SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, the president and COO, also hinted at the upcoming flight. Shotwell, known for her dependability, delivered the opening speech at the Satellite 2024 conference on March 19th and addressed various topics, including SpaceX Starlink Internet Satellite Constellation. Moreover, Shotwell provided insights into the next Starship flight, a topic of keen interest for many. This dual confirmation from both Musk and Shotwell adds weight to the likelihood of an upcoming Starship flight and instills confidence in SpaceX's plans for the future. In her comments regarding the Starship test flight, Gwyn Shotwell Shotwell elaborated that SpaceX is currently going through the data after taking the weekend off. She clarified that Starship IFT-3 was intentionally not orbital. Rather, SpaceX aimed to ensure that Starship could safely return on a predetermined trajectory without the need for a second stage engine relight. Looking ahead to Starship IFT-4, Shotwell indicated that SpaceX is committed to thoroughly analyzing both stages to understand what occurred, with the goal of resuming flights approximately six weeks later, ideally in early May. This information provides clarity and reassurance about the timeline for the next Starship launch. Based on these updates, I share your confidence that early May is a likely time frame for the launch, with a 90% chance of success. With SpaceX's track record and ongoing efforts, there are indeed many reasons to be optimistic about this schedule. There are several noteworthy achievements that underscore SpaceX's progress and technological maturity. First off, consistent success with Super Heavy Startup and Ascent Burns means SpaceX has demonstrated consistent success with Super Heavy Startup and Ascent Burns over two consecutive launches. This highlights a maturing operational system and a reduction in risk from pad clear through staging. Secondly, flawless hot station procedures and in-flight starts of ships six Raptors. The successful execution of two flawless hot staging procedures and in-flight starts of ships six Raptors signifies technological maturity and confidence in existing systems. This further contributes to a reduction in risk. And lastly, at number three, flawless engine operation despite Flight 2's termination. Despite Flight 2's termination due to operational issues related to liquid oxygen dumping, the engines themselves operated flawlessly. This showcases technological maturity with any complications stemming from operational inexperience rather than fundamental problems. These achievements collectively demonstrate SpaceX's continued progress, technological advancements, and increasing confidence in its systems, ultimately leading to a reduction in overall risk. The main issue encountered during this flight, specifically attitude control during coast, does not significantly impact the overall risk assessment underlying the FAA's regulatory approval process for suborbital trajectory launches. Similarly, the FAA's concern about attitude control for the returning Super Heavy booster primarily focuses on mitigating risk to the public, which can be achieved even if the booster crashes into the sea within the designated keep out zone. Once SpaceX completes its internal investigation and implements necessary mitigation measures, the FAA is likely to swiftly approve the conclusions and 
amend the launch license for Flight 4. Given SpaceX's rapid iteration process, an estimated six weeks for data analysis and modifications coupled with another couple of weeks for FAA review and approval could result in a launch campaign sometime in early to mid-May. This timeline reflects SpaceX's commitment to safety and efficiency, ensuring a thorough assessment while maintaining momentum in their launch schedule. Regarding the readiness of the hardware, it has been previously disclosed that the fourth Starship flight will be undertaken by Ship 29 and B-11. Both hardware components have now been fully assembled and undergone cryogenic testing. Additionally, Ship 29 underwent an additional spin test last week while standing next to Ship 29 and B-10. This demonstrates SpaceX's proactive approach to hardware readiness, ensuring that all components are thoroughly tested and prepared for the upcoming launch. Looking ahead to the fourth flight, according to Shotwell, SpaceX's immediate goal is getting re-entry right and ensuring that Starship is able to land at its designated sites. Unlike the Falcon 9, Starship is designed to be caught by its launch tower using massive chopsticks on the launch pad. These chopsticks also stack the second stage Starship spacecraft on the first stage Super Heavy Booster, and their architecture is a crucial component of SpaceX's plan to make the world's biggest rocket rapidly reusable. Later during the discussion, the SpaceX executive shared that the firm plans to fly 148 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions this year. She expressed her enthusiasm for getting Starship into orbit, deploying satellites, and recovering both stages fully, with rapid turnaround on those stages as well. The delay between Starship's second and third tests lasted roughly four months, and if Shotwell's timeline is met, then the fourth flight will mark the fastest turnaround for a Starship launch to date. This underscores SpaceX's commitment to advancing the capabilities and turnaround time of their Starship launch system. The predicted schedule also aligns quite well with Elon Musk's recently announced plan to conduct at least six launches this year. With acceleration over time, reaching IFT-8 for 2024 might be achievable by improving launches by approximately 23% each time. We're observing improvements across various preparation stages, notably the readiness of the next stack by the launch of the previous one. It's essentially speculative, but I presume they'll maintain the IFTN flight numbering until they enter service hopefully even up to the first round-trip journey around the moon, or perhaps even the first flight to Mars, will still be labeled as IFT. In fact, after Starship's third flight, Elon Musk also tweeted promisingly about the future of the Starship program for the journey to Mars. Advanced future versions of the spacecraft will travel between the stars. This highlights the ambitious scope of SpaceX's vision for the future of space exploration and underscores the potential for groundbreaking advancements in the coming years. This starship is designed to traverse our entire solar system and beyond to the cloud of objects surrounding us. A future starship, much larger and more advanced, will travel to other star systems, said Musk in a post on X. So far, only Voyager 1, 2, and Pioneer 10, all NASA spacecraft, have reached interstellar space. Pioneer 11 and New Horizons spacecraft are on trajectories to escape the solar system, but they have not yet done so. During its third test launch last week, the Starship launch system went much further than it did during previous launches and actually managed to put the spacecraft on its intended trajectory. SpaceX only lost the spacecraft when it attempted to re-enter Earth's atmosphere, with it most likely burning up or breaking up over the ocean. However, this achievement is significant for two reasons. First, Starship's Super Heavy Booster rocket, or the first stage, is the biggest and most powerful rocket in history. Secondly, it exploded during both of its previous launches. Despite the challenges, the progress made during the recent test flight demonstrates the potential of SpaceX's Starship program to revolutionize space exploration. Starship is used to prefer to both the Super Heavy rocket and the Starship spacecraft together. It represents SpaceX's next-generation rocket system designed to take humans to orbit, the moon, and beyond. A human landing system variant of the Starship rocket will play a crucial role in taking Artemis III astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. Unlike state-run space agencies like NASA and ISRO from India, which have a lot of health and safety and other internal regulatory mechanisms to worry about, SpaceX operates more like a startup with a fail-fast and reiterate policy. Instead of delaying tests and launches by attempting to get everything right on the first try, SpaceX takes an approach where it continuously makes efforts learning from each failure. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, a rocket similar in capacity to Starship, has only 
only launched once so far during the Artemis 1 mission in 2022, and its next launch will be during the Artemis 2 mission. In contrast, SpaceX has launched the Starship a total of three times since 2023 and is expected to conduct more such launches this year. Part of this contrast can be attributed to how the SLS is not reusable, unlike its SpaceX counterpart, but it also highlights the vastly different approaches followed by the two interdependent space giants. Well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you again next time.